Uh, just to catch up on what, where, we, where we've been, what we've done since the season ended, obviously when the season ended we had a, a thorough review of our roster um, and, then, um, and then we've uh, been uh, got into the UFAs. All right, so we're well on our way there. On the college side, we've had two rounds of uh, Zoom meetings with the college scouts. Uh, they are out, out and about on the pro days. Um, our final uh, prep meetings for the draft will, will uh, reconvene in early April, hopefully uh, some of it in, um, in person. And it's not completely Zoom. We're hoping for that. Um, and right now we're involved with, it, with Zoom uh, session, interview sessions in lieu of the indie interviews. We started those last week. We're doing uh, three players a day on average and in the afternoon. So that's where we're at. And finally, you know, just so you understand, I, I completely understand why you guys have to ask about contracts and negotiations. I understand that. I hope you understand my stance on this. Uh, philosophically, it's between the player and the club. I think it's I think it's very personal, and in terms of timeline timelines, contracts get done when they're supposed to get done. So that's what, the way I feel about it, and you know that's the way it's going to go when you ask me questions about negotiations. And uh, let the questions begin. Paul Schwartz, New York Post. Hey Dave, how are you? Good and yourself, kid. Good, thank you. Good. Um, this is not a negotiation question, okay? Not a negotiation question. You promise? Okay, um, yes. Well, no. But uh, um, um, last year, you had Leonard Williams play under the um, franchise tag number, right? Um, this year, how debilitating would it be if you have to do that again with Leonard Williams, um, almost $20 million of cap space? Well, we still don't know what the cap number is going to be. We, we still don't know that. So uh, I can't really, that's a hypothetical. Don't know what the number's going to be, but it is what it is. I mean, it, it, you don't know the exact number, but it's 180 now. It's not going to be 190. Yeah, um, no, you can still, we can still. Theoretically, uh, how much um, would it hurt you in free agency moving forward if you have to allot all that money to one player on a franchise? Well, it's, you know, Paul, obviously, you know, it, it certainly makes it a little more difficult, but we'll operate and we'll manage. Mark Stapleton, the record. Hey, Dave. Hey, Al. Um, with reference to uh, Leonard and the franchise tag, have you guys officially used the franchise tag on Leonard yet? I know there was a report this morning that you were going to. Well, t uh, t yeah, t yeah, yeah, today's the last day. We're going to have to make it, you know, we'll see where it goes. So you haven't made an official decision on that either way? Um, Go ahead. <laughs> No, I'm waiting for you. No, we, you know, we'll make a decision later on. Okay, and and just in terms of the way this this off season is shaking out, I mean, I know last year you started one way in terms of how you were able to do all your evaluation. You still had the combine, uh, and then obviously everything changed, and you had to kind of really fly by the seat of your pants. I'm just curious, overall, do you feel? Um, that it's more challenging, less challenging going into this year, having gone through an off season like last year, or are there things that you still are kind of uncertain as to how things are going to play out from a scouting perspective, from free agency, uh, because of the uncertainty that's still involved league wide? Well, the you know the uncertainty really doesn't play into unrestricted free agency. All right, those are players that you know you scout. They're they they're in the league. That that you know scouting them is not an issue. The uncertainty certainly falls on the college draft piece. All right, last year, uh, despite the fact that the, that the world essentially closed down mid mid March, we had already had Indy. We had the All Star games, and obviously you'd had a full college season with full normal access. So you you had all that. Okay, this year obviously it's different. Um, the uh, the way the pro days are set up, uh, each team is only going to be allowed to have three people attend, uh, and most likely you're going to be in the stands, whether that's in an indoor facility or or in a stadium. Who knows? It's going to vary from school to school. You also uh, we we also have to uh, have our scouts test and show up with negative tests. So there's a lot of 
a, a lot of that going on. The other, the other problem you, you're gonna, you, that you have is, you know, that, that critical, you know, face-to-face -face contact, you're not gonna be able to have it because even at these pro days, you're not, they're not gonna, you're not gonna be allowed to have one-on-ones with the players. So it's gonna be different, you know, we've got a, you know, a, I've had conversations with, um, you know, other other leagues, people in other leagues, and how they've handled it, and I'll, I'll continue those conversations. Um, but you know, really and truly, there's always there, there's always unknowns. There's just more unknowns this year. The one thing that I will say is, we're used to the Zoom. We're used to we're used to operating differently, and we're used to tr you know we're used to trying to to be in, innovative as to how we operate. So um, the, <clears throat> that part of it is is ongoing. Bruce Beck, NBC. Dave, you look sharp. Hope you continue to have good health. Thank you, Bruce. Um, even if Saquon comes back 100%, do you need playmakers? One, two more? How do you how do you look at that? You know, every, every, Bruce, every team needs playmakers. You know, let, let's, let's be honest, okay? Um, you know, good Lord willing, Saquon will be 100%, and, and obviously he'll make a huge difference. A healthy Saquon, you know, obviously makes a big difference. But, you know, again, you're, you're always looking to add good players. And, you know, oh, by the way, we're not playing until September. All right, so we've got the free agency, we've got the draft, and we'll see how it plays out. You know, we're not uh, – um, it's not like we don't realize where our – you know, what we need. But, again, at the end of the day, it's also about adding really good players. You can never have too many good players at, a, at any position. So, sure. You know, we're, 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 we have our eye out for that, but we also have our eye out for guys that fit us culturally and, and fit what we're, where we're trying to get to. Tom Rock, Newsday. Hey, Tom. Hey, Dave. Um, seems like this year more than ever there's uh, uh, a lot of uh, potential quarterback moves in, in the league and um, certainly a lot of uh, uh, high-ranking uh, draft picks to come out. Uh, Joe said a little earlier that you guys haven't changed your stance on on Daniel. Uh, was it at all tempting to to look at some of those possibilities, or or uh, you know how did how did you handle the, that that situation? Well, it, you know we you know you, you do your evaluation. We've had Daniel for two years. We've done the evaluation on him, and we really believe he's the guy. So it's it's no reason to you know no reason to go look. I mean everybody. You know, what we're doing is in fantasy football. We're not playing. We're not doing that. You know, we've, we, we've got a conviction on him. He's everything we want. He's got all the physical skills. And, again, I, I, I say this all the time. You know, the, guy, the kid just finished his second year of, of NFL football, all right? How many of us, after two years at our new job, were great? No. We all start at point A, and we hopefully get, <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully get to point Z. But the one common denominator is it takes time. Everybody's got to understand that. We're, we believe in Daniel, and that's where it is. Do you feel like there's a, um, a deadline to get this team to a championship caliber before he gets to a second contract? Like, do you, you know, do you need to try and build a winner? On his rookie deal. I mean, you're too, you, you know, you're, too, you, you, you're you're giving me the window theory, Tom. Is that what you're talking? I don't. I'm sorry. Doing windows, yes. Yeah, we're doing windows. I, I don't. You know, Microsoft Windows is nice, but I, I'm not a window theory guy. I, I'm I'm just not. I never have been. I never will be. So we're gonna keep move working the process, keep getting better, and we'll win when you know we'll we'll get there. Kim Jones, NFL Network. I'm sorry. Hey, Dave, it's Kim. Jones. Oh, hey, Kim, how are you? Hi, hi. Um, since you arrived back at the Giants, I think this is now year four of the rebuild. And while I'm sure you might quibble with this, PFF had your offensive line ranked 31st this season in the mm -hmm. league. I'm just wondering where you think you guys are in this rebuild. And did you think it would be a little quicker, frankly? Well, you know, Kim, you know, we've talked about um, we've talked about that. Uh, I went to Carolina, and I, I, you know, the it worked out well. It worked out quickly, and you know, we all want things to happen fast. Um, 
J just for what it's worth, you know, the, in terms of where our offensive line is, they're young and they're talented. And things take time. I saw, you, know, I, you know, I said it earlier. Things take time. You know, we believe in these guys. You know, they, they all came along. We finished the season fairly strong. You know, one of the things that I would say to you is, you know, we're four and two in our division. And if you look at our division, all of those f defensive lines that we play, all of those fronts, a big, powerful, athletic defensive lines. Our guys held up. So we're getting there, Kim, you know, and I, and I just, you know, it's, it's the old saying, you know, you got you to gotta run the ball and, and you got to obviously be able to protect the passer. And we're just, we're young and we're getting better. Dave, if I may, though, you sure. can only say you're young if you don't have Zeitler and Solder because they're not young. They are absolute right, veterans right, in this right. So are you implying they're gone and, the, you know, the young guys have to make it happen now? I'm, I'm not implying that, that at all, Kim. I'm but just Dave, saying. But your offensive line isn't young. Respectfully, you don't have a young offensive line then. When your center and your left guard and your left tackle are rookies, basically, you're young. Pat Leonard, Daily News. Hey Dave, with uh, with the uncertainty and lack of information in the scouting process this year compared to others, is there an argument for trading back in the draft more this year than other years and acquiring more picks to take more swings at the plate, so to speak, or or even maybe moving and acquiring more picks next year because the process might yield clearer results in the scouting uh, process than it does this year, or do you handle it? try to handle it as normally as possible through all those hurdles. Well, you know, Pat, I, I think that, you know, you can make the argument that you're going to have the most information on the top 100, 150 guys. And as you work backwards, because of the lack of touch and whatever, you're not going to have as much information or have as much confidence in your ability to, to work your way through that, through that group. All right? You can, you can make the argument to trade back. All right, because it, because of this thing, Patrick, you, we're, there are going to be guys that are not going to be. There are guys in this draft that when they put pads on in August, it'll be the first time in 20 months they'll have put pads on. Okay, so you got to think about that piece. And some of those are guys that are very, very highly rated. Okay, so you've got to, you know, think about that. Is, is there your point about moving picks to, you know, trading back and getting 20 – 22 picks is very valid because hopefully we'll be back into a somewhat, you know, uh, our, our normal, and we'll have we'll have, be able to draft with in 2022 with that kind of thorough information that we had in in really in 2021, uh, but not um, 2020, but not in 2021. Get that. So you can make an argument for that, Pat. You can make that argument. Trade back, uh, accumulate picks for next year. You can make the argument you sit tight, and you can make the argument if you have all the, all the, um, with, with knowing that most of your inf that your best information is going to be on the top guys, maybe you trade up. So who knows? I, I think I think what you're saying is makes a lot of sense. Thanks, Tom Kenevin, AP. Hey Tom. Hey Dave. Hey Dave. How you doing? Good. And yourself, kid? Good. Can I refer to you as an old GM? Wow. <laughs> That's getting personal. Sure. If, if that makes you happy, have at it. I, here's my quick question. Um, this year with the reduced salary cap, do you have to renegotiate? Is renegotiating with guys with existing contracts more of an option this year? The, 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 again, the problem you have, the, the goal – the goal with the, to, to best manage the cap is to get flat contracts, okay? So if a guy's making $15 million, has a three-year deal at, 15, at $45 million, you'd like to have a $15 million cap number every year. That's the goal. If, once you start restructuring and renegotiating, you, you usually back-end load them. All right? And now, so you, you just, what you're doing is you're kicking the can. So it depends upon... You know how much pain you want to go, you want to deal with, so that's really what it is. Some teams are, you know, don't have any. You know, they philosophically they just say the heck with it and they 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 restructure. And some people don't. And you know, it is you know it's 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 a, it's a philosophical conversation, 
but it, it's not a it's not a good place to get to, to consist constantly restructure renegotiate. Thank you, Brian Dunleavy, New York Post. Hey Dave, uh, this is your first draft since having to let go of DeAndre Baker. Pre Dave Gettleman, the Giants were burned by some immaturity issues with Eli Apple with Eric Flowers. I'm wondering if this draft organizationally you guys have tightened the standard to where any hint of a red flag is a no-go for you guys, or if that's just not possible because too many talented players have at least, you know, some hint of a red flag. Yeah, see, what what I'm going to say to you, Ryan, is, again, you have to remember how young these players are, okay? We're not getting – it's not the old days where you had four guys that played four years, played where almost everybody redshirted. We're, we're, we're drafting, you know, Andrew Thomas had just turned 21. You know, I've told you before, I drafted two 20-year-old guys in, when I was in Carolina. They're coming out younger and younger, so there is that, there is that piece to them, and they've been covered their whole lives, and they've had their, you know, they've been taken care of, and they've been covered, and, and they haven't had to be as accountable as maybe they, they need to have been. So when they get to us, they have two things that are very dangerous and it's time and money. And some handle it better than others, Ryan. So at the end of the day, that is something we really um, try to work our way through. You know, we, we talk about maturity all the time with players. And again, it's, it's you know, you, you, you turn around and you, 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 know, you interview the players and you, you ask them the question, you know, what, what do you think is going to be your biggest challenge? And they turn around and say, well, I, sh I shouldn't have any problems. And I'm saying to myself, well, you know, how much does he know? How, how, how aware is he? How self-aware is he? Does he really understand what he's getting into? You know, when I tell him, you're 21 years old and you're going to play against a 28, 29-year-old man who wants to rip your lungs out, you know, it's different. You're not, you're not, you're not in college anymore. So, you know, the, the long way around to that, answer Ryan is it, it the maturity piece is really important and you and you work on it and at the end of the day sometimes you're not right Jordan Rana ESPN hey Dave hope you're feeling well thank you Jordan to hope you are too one thing came said and then get to my real question I'm sorry uh, I said I want to follow up on one thing that Kim was getting at and then get to another question sure. but uh, in regards to you're talking about a young line if that's the case are you Comfortable going into the season with two players, you know, in their second year, like Matt Hurt and uh, Andrew Thomas as your, as your starting tackles? I am, yes. Okay. <laughs> you obviously saw enough prepared. I mean, we didn't see we didn't see a lot of them, right? So I'm I'm curious, what is it you saw that gives you that confidence right now? I'm sorry. I said we didn't see a lot of Matt Paired, so I'm wondering what you saw that gives you that confidence that you could that well, he's the starting caliber player be, right now. Because when he played, he played pretty. He played fine. He played pretty damn well, you know. And, and you know, at some point in time, you've got to let the young kids play. You know. You know the. the listen, every player was a rookie at some point, or a young player at some point. At some point in time, you have to have confidence in your in, in who's on your club, and you have to put them in there and let them play. You know, again, I just like I've said to some of you before, how many of you had Pulitzer Prize winning articles your first or second year? Zach Rosenblatt, NJ.com. Dion, can I just ask another one real quick? Make it quick, please. Yes. Yeah. Dave, uh, we you don't have the proverbial you know number one receiver or uh, you know dominant edge rusher that you know the bell cow I think as you were said last year. Uh, how realistic is it to fill both those spots in one off season, considering how much those positions get paid? Well, it's you know it's it's not there is a draft, right? So you don't necessarily have to buy them both, and uh, we're just gonna see how it plays out, see what guys are worth and what the what the expense costs are and. We'll just keep moving forward. Zach Rosenblatt, NJ.com. Hey, Dave. Um, you guys added uh, Kyle Bryan to your front office uh, the other day. I'm curious uh, what went into that decision. What, what's his role going to be in the front office, and what, what do you think he can kind of bring to the team? Well, I, you know, what, what Kyle brings is a, a variety of experiences. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's, been a, he's worked in pro. He's been a 
He's been a, obviously a college scout, a director of college scouting, a vice president of player personnel. You know, Kyle went to Harvard, and uh, we're always looking to add smart people. So he's, uh, you know, he's, he's a you know quality evaluator, and we had a chance to add him, and you want to add quality people. So Kyle will be very involved in what we're doing. Chris Carlin, ESPN. Dave, I just want to touch on something you were talking about earlier with less information that you guys can get this year, and everybody's in the same boat, but is there a little bit more uneasiness as a GM going into a draft like this when you don't necessarily have access to the people that are around these players or you don't get to see these players in person, Mm -hmm. just where that level is, and, and if there is a number, like a percentage of less information that you would have on a prospect this year when evaluating him than you normally would? It, it, it Really, Chris, the whole, the whole lack of uh, – what makes you uncomfortable is the, the lack of um, personal contact you have with the players. You know, that, that's really what it is. Watching them operate, talking to them. Um, just n- not having that personal touch is very difficult. The other thing that's ca- that's that that is uh, strange is, you know, most of the time when you're going into when you're talking about players in April, once all the sh- you know smoke is cleared and you've had all your you've had Indy, you've had your pro days, you have your own personal measurements on these guys. You've got the 40 yard dash times, are your times. Okay, so this is going to be a lot of information that. We're hoping is accurate, <laughs> you know, and we're, and we're, and, and Chris, be, you know, because of that, we're going to get into, we always talk about, um, when we talk about players, we talk about play speed. I mean, uh, you know, I've been, you know, pretty vocal about Indy being the underwear Olympics. And, you know, last time I checked, when you play football, you have full pads on. So it's, it's not what a guy runs on in a 40 yard dash time. It's how fast he plays. So I think that's going to come into, in, in a, in a focus even more, but it, it's not so much we we can get with, you know, the coach assistant coaches and other folks. That's not the problem. The problem is the personal contact with the players and where are the measurables coming from, and and, and uh, in terms of especially for me more so it's the height and the weight, and and the and the body's you know uh, measurements. The forty yard dash is not, um, you know, that's a, that's a watch. And I I really believe in play speed so. That it, 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 it is a little unsettling, Chris, because, you, you, you know, it's, it's, I've said this before, you know, what we're doing is educated guessing, okay? So this, this makes us a little more uneducated, not having this personal touch with these players. With the doctors in particular, the medical stuff, not having your own doctors get a chance to look at them to where that plays in? Yeah, the, you know, sure, you know, because... You know, it, like I said, it's it's they're, they're going to have some kind of uh, there is going to be an an indie in re, in regards to um, medical. Um, I, I believe they're talking about having the top 150 go to Indianapolis and have a full thorough medical. There's going to be a lot. There's going to be some telehealth interviews involved and what? Excuse me and whatever. But sure, it's 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 a little unsettling. It is, you know, with the, with the medical piece because. There's some unknowns. The more unknowns you have, the more unsettling it is. We'll take three more. Matt, Patty, Daryl, Matt Lombardo, fan-sided. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Good, Matt. How are you? Good, good. I'm curious when it comes to Saquon Barkley's situation coming off the injury, do you guys need to see him on the field before opening up long-term contract talks? And just just curious what the injury history plays into that um, as he goes into his fourth year. Well, I think that's part of the discussion. Okay, and uh, obviously we're going to have to make a decision this spring on picking up whether we pick up his fifth-year option or not. But uh, you know, certainly, you know, it, it's again we get back to that medical question. Uh, it's unknown, and and you know, you, what you have to do is get your trainer and your doctors involved and, and make it make your best decision. Thanks, Eddie Trainer, Giants Country. Hey Dave, how you doing? Good, you Pat. Doing well, thanks. Dave, last year, I don't think you had any undrafted free agents. Actually, I I take that back. I think uh, Nico made made the roster uh, later in the season. But with that said, I mean, 
Do you feel like, given the circumstances, that you're missing out on maybe some smaller school gems? And have you adjusted how you're you're going about your scouting process to maybe pick up some of these guys and, and pay more attention to them? Well, the problem, you got to remember, Patty, last year we had 10 draft picks. Okay, so that's an unusual number. So you can make the argument that those four seventh, you know, you take three of the seventh round picks, the last three, and if we had signed them after the draft, you know, I mean, one of them, one of them was, um, it was uh, cheese and crackers. It was uh, the inside linebacker um, from Georgia, Tay Crawford. Uh, and um, one of them was Chris Williamson, who was on the practice squad. So, and the other guy, I'm not sure of. It wasn't Cam Brown. Cam Brown was a sixth. But the point is, those guys made our club. Okay, so you can look at those as as free, free agent signings after the draft. The other thing you have to remember is right now some of those schools are playing, Patty. You know, some of the smaller school guys are, are playing, and you know we'll do the best we can with evaluating them. You know, it's it's there's film available. There's you know, we're, we're trying, you're trying to run a draft, you're trying to get all the draft information and look at these kids. So it's a challenge. It's a challenge, but we're going to, we're working at it. Thank you. You're welcome. Last question here, Daryl Slater, NJ.com. Hey, Dave, I hope you're doing well. Same um, here, Daryl. Yeah. Um, so big picture here. Um, I guess I'll end on that. You guys have won five, four, and six games yeah. in your three seasons yeah. here. What are your expectations about how much better this team should be this year now that you feel like you have kind of settled things at quarterback, which is a big question. Right. How much better should this team be in 2021? You know, I, you know, obviously there's, you know, everybody has expectations. And, you know, it's, it's about just, you know, it's about getting better. I'm not going to put a win, a win number on it. I'm not going to – I'm just not going to go there. Daryl, I think we're really – I, th I think we're I think we're just about there. You know, we've taught you guys have alluded to some of our a couple of our needs, and uh, you know I think that we're gonna I believe we're gonna get there.